This video was made possible by our generous supporters on Patreon. Check out patreon.com slash nwr for all the details. If I said name a Nintendo 64 game that few have played but that absolutely everyone has heard the theme song to, you'd be left with only one answer. Buck Bumble. What about now it's time to rock with the bigger the buck bumble? What about now it's time to rock with the bigger the buck bumble? Bump to the bump to the bump to the base, bump to the bump to the bumble. Bump to the bump to the bump to the base, bump to the bump to the bumble. My name is John Redden, and welcome to Third Party 64, where we'll explore the often unsung third party library of the Nintendo 64. The rules are simple. We'll only cover games that were not developed, published, or contracted by Nintendo. With that, let's get to today's game. Buck Bumble has become a bit of a meme game over the past decade or so, largely because of its incredible main theme. But as a kid, playing this on his Nintendo 64 in the late 90s, there were no YouTubers to tell me about this game. I just saw a Nintendo 64 game where you were some sort of robot bee, and that was enough for me. Game marketing was different back then. You could just make a game about a cyborg bee fighting chemically enhanced bugs in the English countryside, and everyone would just sort of go along with it. And yes, that is in fact the full and complete plot of Buck Bumble. All that to say, I played this game before it was cool. You posers, I'm like a Buck Bumble hipster. Your meme is merely my childhood. Buck Bumble was published by Ubisoft, and if you're wondering, yes, that does mean they brought a full-size Buck Bumble mascot costume to E3 in 1998. Because Ubisoft is oddly consistent with their weirdness over the years. The game was developed by Argonaut Software, the same Argonaut made famous for Nintendo fans by Star Fox on the Super Nintendo. In fact, the lead programmer was Carl Graham, one of the two men credited as being the key minds behind the Super FX chip, which powered games like Star Fox, Stunt Race FX, Vortex, Yoshi's Island, and the Super Nintendo version of Doom. He's also one of the OG Star Fox developers that I still haven't managed to interview, so Carl, if you're listening, I'd like to chat with you about your games. Call me. At its core, Buck Bumble is a 3D flight combat game, a genre Argonaut was intimately familiar with at this point. The story is set in what was the not-so-distant future of 2010. After a chemical spill in rural England, several groups of mutated bugs join forces to form an alliance called the Herd. You play as Buck Bumble, a bumblebee who fights for the resistance, another vague bug alliance. Buck volunteers to be fitted with cybernetic enhancements in order to protect the garden from the herd. Levels play out in large 3D environments in which specific objectives must be accomplished. In a broad sense, Buck Bumble is not unlike other flight combat games, such as Rogue Squadron. Where Buck Bumble differs, however, is in Buck's ability to stop in midair or drop to the ground and navigate on foot. This gives you a high degree of flexibility in how you can approach combat as compared to similar games of the time. Say you need to take out a ground base unit. You could make strafing runs, as would be the tactic in other flight combat games, or you could find a spot to land behind some cover and take it out from a defendable ground position. Buck Bumble is largely unique in this approach to the genre, even outside of the Nintendo 64 or the confines of the time of its release. Beyond its single-player campaign, Buck Bumble also included two multiplayer modes. One, a straightforward deathmatch doesn't bring anything particularly exciting to the table, but the other may serve as a predecessor to an extremely popular modern game. Buzzball sees two players playing soccer with a giant ball. The ball itself is physics-driven, so shooting or running into it will push it in the appropriate direction. Each player has to try to guide the oversized ball into their opponent's goal. It isn't hard to spot the similarities between Buzzball and the hugely popular Rocket League. Buzzball may very well be the origin point of the giant soccer ball genre, though perhaps even closer to Buzzball is the Blast Ball mode in Metroid Prime Federation Force, which also gives you the option to shoot the ball rather than simply running into it. We owe it all to Buck Bumble. Of course, all of this sort of dances around the elephant in the room, the theme song. The growth of the internet has allowed Buck Bumble's title theme to far exceed the popularity of Buck Bumble itself. The song, along with the rest of the soundtrack, was composed by Justin Charvona, who also worked on other notable Argonaut titles, such as Croc and its sequel, along with the often forgotten SNES Super FX title, Vortex, which just so happens to have a great soundtrack.
The soundtrack to Buck Bumble is actually the one aspect of the release that has managed to escape its N64 captivity with a recent release on vinyl and major streaming platforms. In fact, I may have inadvertently contributed to this release in that the cover art appears to use a transparent PNG of Buck that I cut out for a video thumbnail and posted online. I only noticed when I got my copy of the vinyl and saw that the image on the cover shows a mistake that I made when cutting out that image of Buck, leaving a non-transparent bit between his head and antenna. So there you go. My work was, presumably unintentionally, used on some of the only official Buck Bumble merchandise ever released. Buck Bumble harkens back to a very different time for game development, where you could toss a brand new character into brand new gameplay and just sort of see if it works. In Buck Bumble's case, the game released in 1998 to reasonably positive reviews, keeping in mind that in this period, Nintendo fans were actively trying to shake off that childish persona that Sega had managed to thrust upon them during the 16-bit era. Buck Bumble was perceived by magazines of the time as being a bit more irreverent and hard-edged, Buck was a bee with a gun. What could possibly appeal more to mature gamers than that? Say hello to Buck Bumble. He's Mother Nature's twisted little cyborg soldier in a rumble to the death with the evil insect empire. Yeah! So don't bug me! Buck Bumble for N64. The one and only killer bee. Ubisoft. Buck Bumble would ultimately be the only Nintendo 64 game that Argonaut ever developed. Rather, their attention was turned to the PlayStation. As for Buck Bumble's modern availability, the situation isn't great. It has never been re-released, so the only official way to play it is with a Nintendo 64 and an original cartridge. On the bright side, it has so far stayed relatively inexpensive as far as Nintendo 64 games go. As far as I can tell, Ubisoft retains full publishing rights, and could release it via Nintendo's NSO app if they desired. Given its status, or rather the status of its theme song, Buck Bumble is an oddly culturally significant game, and would be a perfect candidate for such a service. Beyond the catchy theme song and the ridiculous story concept, Buck Bumble is a surprisingly original action game that takes a unique approach to flight combat. While it has its fair share of flaws, it is representative of one of the most experimental periods in game design history, and worth giving a shot today. If you enjoyed this video, consider subscribing to Nintendo World Report TV and checking out NintendoWorldReport.com for a whole lot more. You can chat with us about this or anything else Nintendo related in our Discord using the link in the description. If you'd like to get a hold of me directly, you can reach out to me on Twitter or X or whatever we're calling it these days using the handle on screen. I'd also love to know if you have any recommendations for other third-party Nintendo 64 games I should take a look at. Once again, my name's John Rarden, thank you very much for watching, and I will see you next time. This video is made possible by our generous supporters on Patreon. Did you know that Nintendo World Report is funded directly by fans like you? When you support Nintendo World Report on Patreon, you get immediate access to multiple exclusive podcasts every month, exclusive Discord channels, an early look at select content, and more, all for as little as a dollar a month. Check out patreon.com slash nwr for all the details.